make yourself all cosy, nice and relaxed in your bed, and then close your eyes. Take a deep breath in, and then slowly and gently let the breath out. Again, deep breath in, and then slowly and gently let the breath out. One more time, deep breath in, and slowly and gently let the breath out, and just relax. Now imagine you're walking in a beautiful, lush green rainforest with the most amazing trees. Some of them are very tall. So tall, it looks like they reach up to the sky. And you're deep in the forest and you realise it's late in the evening because you notice that the sun has already set and it's disappearing beyond the trees. The night sky is going darker and you look up and you can see the stars have come out and you notice that the moon is shining brightly high up in the sky lighting your way forward. The stars are so very bright you can see them clearly as you walk along and the air smells so fresh and crisp it fills your lungs, helping them to expand and really breathe in deeply. And it feels so good. As you walk, you can hear the amazing sounds of the evening. You can hear an owl calling to its mate. You can hear the gentle hum of crickets. You can hear the wings of the birds as they fly to the resting place for the night. You can even hear twigs being broken and stepped upon by the animals of the night as they go about their business. And this comforts you and it makes you feel quite safe, very relaxed and so calm and so peaceful. You stop suddenly and look ahead of you and you see what looks like a dinosaur. Wow, a real live dinosaur he has a long neck and a very long tail but rather a small body his skin is brown like the bark on the trees and it has long stripes on it that are the colour of the green leaves and he has the most amazing big brown kind eyes he also has a bright orange tie around his long neck and a very big bright yellow flower sticking out behind one of his ears. Hmm, it's a bit odd. The dinosaur is gently eating the grass and the flowers around him. Phew, you think to yourself, well that's okay because now you know that he won't eat you because he is a herbivore and not a carnivore. Only carnivores eat meat, so they won't eat you. You watch him quietly for a moment, because you don't want to scare him. And you notice how he chews his food. It's like his mouth is rolling from side to side. You know, kind of like the way a cow does. And he looks like he's really enjoying it too. He's very happily munching away without a care in the world. Suddenly, he sees you, and he stops, and he looks at you. And then, just as suddenly, he darts behind a very large tree. He's hiding from you. He thinks you can't see him now, but you can, because his very long tail is sticking out, and you can see it. And you can also see his bright orange tie flapping in the breeze. You walk over to where he is hiding and you say hello. You tell him not to be afraid. You're not going to hurt him. You just want to say hello. The 
dinosaur with the big bright orange tie and the big yellow flower behind his ear peeks out from behind the tree and he looks scared but you tell him it's okay you just want to be his friend the dinosaur slowly steps out from behind the tree and very shyly says hello and you smile at him and tell him your name and he smiles back at you and he tells you that his name is Douglas and you say you are very pleased to meet him you ask Douglas why he's so scared of you and he tells you it's not that he's just scared of you he's scared of everyone even the other dinosaurs he tells you that he doesn't have any friends only his mum and his dad and you think that's very sad Douglas tells you that because he doesn't know anyone they scare him he says he's very afraid of anything new not just dinosaurs and people everything you tell him that's a shame because new things can be fun and you tell him what if you found a new fruit that you hadn't tasted before but you wouldn't try it well because it was new then you would be missing out on something very tasty because sometimes new fruit tastes much better than the old fruit Douglas says that that is true but eating new fruit isn't the same as meeting new people so you tell him that meeting new people is much better than meeting or tasting new fruit if he met new people and new dinosaurs then maybe he would meet someone who could be his best friend someone who he could play with and go on adventures with now wouldn't that be nice but what if I met someone new and I didn't like them Douglas says well you say if you meet someone that you don't like you can still be nice to them but you don't have to be their friend you can just say goodbye and not see them again and then everything will be okay Douglas says he never thought about it that way before he says all he ever did was hide away from them you tell him that sometimes there are strange people and strange creatures but mostly everybody are usually very nice so you tell him that sometimes it's worth meeting a few maybe not so nice just to meet the ones who are nice because you will meet them so for a few moments stay with Douglas and show how nice and friendly that you can be you can tell him all about your friends too how nice they are you can tell him all about the bits in your life the good bits and the bad bits or the not so good bits that you don't really like very much but you still have a wide circle of friends all these people in your case people that you love very much some you just like some you don't like but the ones you don't like you just don't have to see them again do you maybe you can help Douglas to find some new friends of his own so just stay with him for a few moments and help him and be kind
That was nice, wasn't it? Just you and Douglas making a friendship that will last forever. But now it's time for you to return to your own home now. You've had a really lovely time with your new friend, Douglas. You've helped him very much. Now, he's not so scared to meet new people or new creatures. And he's not so scared to try new things. Because you helped him. Because you were kind to him. Douglas looks a little bit sad that you are leaving. But you tell him that you will be back again really soon. Then Douglas gives you a great big smile of happiness. And this makes you very happy too. Douglas gives you a wave and says goodbye and bravely turns away. But he does feel ever so brave now, ever so confident. And you did this for him. You helped him to be brave and you helped him to be confident. And you should be very, very proud of yourself. And remember, you can come back here any time you want to see Douglas again. And I know that he'd be very, very happy if you do. So for now, just breathe in through your nose. And slowly and gently, breathe out through your mouth. Again, breathe in and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. One last gentle time, breathe in and slowly breathe out through your mouth. And you find yourself now back in your very own bed feeling so happy, so peaceful, but very, very tired. So close your eyes now and just rest. Night, night. Now imagine yourself sitting in a huge football stadium right at the end of the pitch. The sky it's a beautiful blue and there's hardly any clouds at all. And the sun is at its highest and there are thousands of people all around you. The stadium is very full. Well, it would be. It is, after all, the cup final. You look out onto the pitch and you see a football match in full swing. The players are running up and down the field, passing the ball to each other. All of them trying to get the ball off the other team and trying so desperately to win the match and bring the cup home. And you see that on the backs of the players' shirts is their number and the name of their team. One team is called the Growly Bears. The other team is called the Cheeky Monkeys. How odd! You've never heard names like that before, especially for football teams. Well, the reason the teams have those odd names is because of their mascots. The Growly Bears mascot is a great big brown bear who keeps growling every time the other teams score a goal. He does not like that very much. The Cheeky Monkey's mascot is a large black monkey with brown patches on him. And he is very cheeky. He keeps pulling tongues at the growly bears, trying to put them off their game. That's not very nice, is it? But it is very exciting watching the match. The atmosphere is amazing. And you can smell hot dogs and popcorn. And it's making you feel a bit hungry too. But there are people everywhere. Some of them are waving their team scarves high in the air. Some of them are just shouting, telling the teams who to pass the ball to. And some of them are just singing very loudly, cheering their team on. And you love it here. As you are sitting so close to the pitch, there are Growly Bear team members 
sitting in front of you. And there is a little boy who is sitting on the bench, dressed in the team colours. And he turns to you and he grins. He tells you his name is Jake and that he is a substitute for his team. He tells you he is waiting for a chance to get on the pitch and play. And he says he's been waiting for a very long time now, but he is ready for when he's called upon. The two of you have a little chat together whilst watching the game. You are both so excited because it looks like the Growly Bears are winning. The score is 2-1 and the Growly Bears fans are shouting very loudly, egging their team on. And just as you both think your team is going to win, one of the Cheeky Monkeys players gets the ball and dribbles all the way up the field. But your team can't catch him, he's so fast. Then he stops, he aims, he shoots, and the ball fires thunderously into the back of the net. The crowd roars with delight. The Cheeky Monkeys all jump in the air and start hugging each other. They have just evened up the score. Oh no, it's now to all. Jake looks very disappointed as it's the cup final. He really, really wanted his team to take home that precious cup. The match resumes with both teams trying desperately to score the winning goal. Then suddenly, the referee blows his whistle. It's nearly the end of the game. And one of the Browley Bears team members has taken a knock. He was tripped up by a cheeky monkeys player. It's a foul. But there is only four minutes left of the game to play. And you can see a discussion going on, on the field between the ref and the players. The team's managers enter the pitch and join in with the talks. Then they all turn to look at Jake. The manager walks over to Jake and tells him this is his chance. He has been selected to take the place of the injured player. Jake is ecstatic. He is so happy and you are so happy for him because you know what it means to him. Jake runs onto the field and joins his team members. They talk to Jake and then they too turn to look at you. They need another player. So Jake said that he wants you to play too. You are over the moon. You get up and go onto the field and suddenly you have the same kit on that Jake has. It just appeared on you like magic. You are so happy. The game starts up again with only four minutes left. One of the players passes the ball to you and you run with it. And as you run towards the goal, you look for a player who is open. And you see that Jake is, but he's further away than you thought. So you dribble past another man and then play a perfect through ball over to Jake. Jake receives the ball and bombs towards the opposition goal. The goalkeeper is ready for him now and comes rushing out towards Jake at great speed. And there is now only one minute left before the whistle blows. Jake composes himself and as the keeper approaches him, he chips the ball delightfully over the goalkeeper's head. Everyone holds their breath, including you. The ball sails through the air. It seems like it's in slow motion. Then the ball nestles into the back of the net. What a goal! The crowd go wild. There is cheering and singing. The players all run to Jake just as the final whistle blows. The Growly Bears have won. They have won the cup final and the cup is coming home. Yes! The other players pick up Jake and raise him high on their shoulders. Then some of them come for you and raise you up too. After all, it was you who provided the wonderful assist for Jake. Without the two of you playing, they probably would have lost the match. Your team all lines up to receive the cup. And the captain of the team holds it high for the crowd to see 
and they roar with delight. Then each team member receives a golden medal that they get to take home with them. Wow, your very own golden medal. You all head back to the locker room to get changed and to go to the after-match party. So for just a little while, you get to hang out with Jake and his teammates. You get to talk to all the other players, the manager, the coach. And best of all, you and Jake get to eat as much as you want, especially the cakes, the sweets and the ice creams. So go and have some fun at the party. Chat to anyone you want and relive the glory. Now that the party is coming to an end, it's time for you to return home. So you talk to Jake and you thank him for letting you play on his team. You are so happy to have met Jake. He is a wonderful, kind and loving little boy. He's also a very, very good football player. And you just know that the two of you will be best friends forever. Jake tells you that any time you want, you can come back and play football with all of them. After all, you too assisted in scoring the winning goal, didn't you? You say goodbye to Jake and the rest of the players and start your journey back home. And pretty soon, you are back in your own room and you are absolutely exhausted. And let's be fair, you have had a very busy day. You put on your pyjamas and climb into your own bed. And you think about Jake and how amazing he is. He is the best football player you have ever seen. And he is your friend. You close your weary eyes and settle down. And you take a deep breath in through your nose and gently blow it out from your mouth. You take another deep breath and gently blow it out from your mouth. And it's now that you feel a gentle wave of sleepiness starting at your feet. 
and you can feel your toes going to sleep and it feels all warm and tingly and ever so soft. And you feel a soothing, gentle wave of sleepiness coming up your calves and your shins. And you can feel it going all the way up your thighs. And you think your legs have already gone to sleep. But you feel so tired now, so sleepy, but so very happy. You don't want to open your eyes now, you just want to rest them. This beautiful wave of sleepiness travels all the way up your body, down your arms, and then into your hands, making your body feel very, very heavy, very, very tired, and very, very sleepy. This gentle, warm wave of sleepiness travels up your face and over the top of your head and then down the back of your neck. Oh, you feel so tired now, so sleepy. You give a big yawn. You feel so very peaceful now, so relaxed. So relaxed and so very, very sleepy. You just want to sleep. So you drift off into a peaceful night's sleep, dreaming of Jake and the growly bears. And remember, you are safe, you are loved, and you are protected. Always. Now imagine yourself standing on a beautiful beach filled with golden sand and the sun is shining and there's not one single cloud in the sky. The sky is an amazing blue colour. It's so wonderful that it looks like it's alive. So alive that you could almost reach out and touch it. Almost. So alive that you could feel the vibrations. Just almost feel them. And if you look closely enough, maybe you can see the shimmering vibrations as they move slowly and gently through the sky. You turn your attention to the ocean and see the movement of the waves as they gently come up to the shore. The sun shines so brightly on the surface of the water that it looks like it's glistening with starlight. And as you look at it, you find yourself feeling so peaceful so calm and you imagine what it would feel like to just float on the water and let the waves gently take you to wherever you need to be it's then that you notice something moving amongst the waves and you see a little head just bobbing up and down you're not sure what it is at first but then you realize it's a turtle and the little turtle is swimming your way. The little turtle comes out of the ocean and onto the sand and he has the most amazing smile on his tiny face. He looks so happy that you find yourself smiling back at him. He comes up alongside of you and he says hello and he tells you that his name is Teddy. He is extremely cute and he looks ever so cuddly and he can stand on his back legs. And he has little turtle flippers, big brown twinkling eyes, a funny little nose, and the sweetest smile on his tiny face. You say hello to him and tell him your name and you are so very pleased to meet him. Teddy tells you that he has a little cave he likes to have a sleepover in sometimes. He tells you that it's just behind the tropical trees at the edge of the sand. Teddy asks you if you would like to stay and play with him today. He asks you if you would like to have a sleepover in his cave. Wow. He tells you that it has all mod cons too. It's not just a cave with no windows and no proper floor, you know. Oh no, only the best for Teddy. His cave 
has carpets and fluffy rugs too. It has everything he needs to be comfortable and warm. And he tells you he even has nice candles that make his cave smell ever so nice. So you tell him that you would love to spend the day with him and would love it even more to be able to stay in his little cave. So the two of you set off across the sand to Teddy's cave. And just as you reach the opening to Teddy's cave, you notice that there is a volleyball court just outside it. Teddy sees you looking and he asks you if you would like to play a game of volleyball with him. He says it's his favourite game of all time. Oh yes please, you say. So you both get ready to play. And when you begin, you wonder how, how, just how, will Teddy be able to get the ball over the net? Because after all, Teddy is, well, he's a bit small, with tiny flippers. You look over at Teddy and you see that he's attaching something made of wood to his back legs. It's stilts. He's fastening stilts to his legs. And when he stands up, he's now the same height as you. Oh, wow. Just as Teddy is walking towards you, you both hear a rustle from the trees and out pops a very beautiful grey donkey and a rather large black and white ostrich. Teddy looks delighted and has a very happy smile on his face. Hello, he says to the two newcomers. Teddy tells you that they are his very best friends. The beautiful grey donkey is called Josephine and she has the most amazing big blue eyes which is really very unusual as donkeys have big brown eyes and the black and white ostrich is called Henrietta and she is very tall. They both say hello to you and how nice it is to meet you. They tell Teddy that they have come to play too. So the four of you begin your game of volleyball. So for a few moments, just have fun playing volleyball with Teddy, Josephine and Henrietta and maybe get to know them better. Phew, that was a good game. Who won? 
you are all feeling a little bit tired now and need a rest because you've had a very exciting and very energetic game. Teddy invites you all into his cave to have some cold drinks and some cakes and some sweets. Teddy's cave is wonderful. It has lots of toys and games to play with. It has big soft bean bags for seats, lots of them, which by the way are very comfortable. Teddy says that he uses his to sleep on as he doesn't need a bed. And you think that is a very good idea as you sink down into your lovely soft bean bag. The little happy turtle tells you that when you woke up this morning, you didn't think what a wonderful day you were going to have. You woke up to a beautiful day of life, a life that holds adventure and many surprises and new friends. You think to yourself how very thankful you are that you simply woke up and had the opportunity to experience this wonderful day. And you feel so very blessed. You also learn things today, like how to play volleyball with a turtle on stilts. A turtle on stilts. Now that was fun. Teddy tells you that he is grateful for all life's lessons, big and small. He tells you that he learns something new every single day. Then he does a happy little dance and it makes you feel all the happiness in your own heart. He tells you that every day he says thank you out loud. In fact, he says it lots of times during the day, especially when he feels happy and grateful for his life. You realise that you too have many things to be grateful and happy for. Your family, your friends, the animals that you love, the trees and how they move gently in the breeze. So many things to be grateful for. The big things and especially the small things and you're very thankful for this. Teddy does another little happy dance and that makes you giggle. Teddy reminds you that all of these people, they love you just exactly the way you are. And you feel so good in your heart knowing that you are loved and cared for very, very much. Teddy looks so happy that you are all here with him and he's just loving it but now it's time for everyone to go to bed because what you didn't realize was that while you were all chatting and drinking your cold drinks and eating your cakes and your sweets the sun has set and it's now dark outside but not too dark as the stars are shining and twinkling very brightly in the night sky Josephine and Henrietta have also decided that they too are going to join in your sleepover with Teddy. So you all settle down on your big squashy beanbags. And you think to yourself that life is so much better when we take time to be grateful for all that we have and for all of the wonderful moments we experience in our lives. You lean back in your comfy beanbag and close your eyes for just a little bit and even though your eyes are closed you still smile to yourself feeling so peaceful and calm so relaxed and as you sink deeper and deeper into your comfy beanbag you say good night to Teddy and to Josephine and to Henrietta your new friends. You take a deep sigh, relaxing even further, sinking down and down, sinking down and down into blissful sleep, feeling so very happy. And you take a breath, 
you sigh it back out, going deeper and deeper into sleep. And your eyes feel so heavy now, so relaxed, so peaceful and calm. But you feel so very, very happy. Just like Teddy, the happy turtle. So sleep now and just rest. Now imagine that you are a beautiful seahorse, a bright and shiny silver one. And you shine so brightly that the stars think that you shine brighter than they do. And you do. You are like a bright and shining light for all to see. And you are a guiding light too. You are a very magnificent and strong seahorse. And you have a curvy, muscular tail and a beautiful, bumpy skin. And you have a nice big belly and a tube for a mouth. And you're surrounded by a big, sparkling, deep blue ocean with many different shades of blues and greens. And you float gently on the currents of this ocean. And it feels so peaceful here for you. It's so nice that you would never want to be anywhere else but here. This beautiful ocean is where you live your happy life with all of your friends and your family, all your seahorse brothers and sisters, and there are many of them. There are lots of other colourful fish swimming nearby. And they too are your friends. You have many friends here deep within this ocean. And you see your friend Seymour, who is a friendly starfish. And you see him moving slowly across the ocean floor. This is his top speed, by the way. He's moving as quickly as he can because he's on his way home now as it's nearly his bedtime and it's nearly yours too. You see a beautiful rainbow fish called George. He too is hurrying home as well. A black and white angel fish hurries past you with a smile on her face. She is Betty and she is one of your best friends. She tells you it's time to go home now, as it's nearly bedtime. And she doesn't want to miss the hot chocolate her mum is making for her. You see a bright orange and black clownfish called Sebastian swimming back and forth with a great big smile on his face. And he says he can stay out for another 10 minutes to play. But then he too has to go home and off he swims. As you look around you, you see a shy clam who occasionally comes out to say hello. Her name is Sybil, but she is very shy and so she scuttles back into her shell and closes the lid. Finally, you see Frank the fabulous crab. He is a very happy crab, but he always gets himself tangled in everything but he's still always very happy. In fact, you've never known him to be not happy at all, ever. You are surrounded in this beautiful deep blue and green ocean by all of your underwater friends. It's one big happy family and you love it so very much. You are free here. You are very peaceful here. And most of all, you are very, very happy here. So for just a short moment, just play with your friends. Well, the ones that are still out anyway. Or maybe just have a swim around. Or just float and drift peacefully on the current.
Now, it's time for you to return to your home to have a good night's sleep. And you do feel very sleepy now. You hear a voice in the distance and it's your seahorse mum calling for you to come home now. You hear other mums calling out for their children to come home as well because it's everybody's bedtime. You say goodnight and you swim off home. You reach your home amongst the gently swaying reeds and you see your family waiting for you. You find your favourite soft green reeds and begin to settle down with your long tail wrapped around the reeds to keep you safe for the night. As you settle down to rest, waves of peace and calm wash over your entire body. And the waves begin to relax you deeper and deeper as you sway gently. Your tail is very secure so that you won't float off in the night. You'll stay safely right here while you rest tonight. You gently move with the ocean current that sways you back and forth. And as you relax here, you feel yourself becoming so very sleepy. You feel yourself drifting peacefully with a soft and gentle ocean current, but still staying in one place because your tail holds you safely. You feel so amazing floating here. And you know you'll sleep well tonight because your heart feels so happy and your body is completely calm. And as you float on gentle waves of relaxation, your body feels heavy as you drift off into peaceful sleep. And you feel so happy right now, so peaceful and calm as you go deeper and deeper into a beautiful sleep, breathing quietly and gently now, so peaceful, so calm, so very safe. Good night, little seahorse. Sweet dreams. <laughs>